My name's Neil. I was going to, uh, I was going to tell you about me and Reg, because it's New Year's, and every time it gets to this time of year, I think about all the stuff we used to do. So this is going back a few years. Me and Reg was always driving around in his van. We were self-employed. We ran our own business. Well, it was Reg's business, really. He owned a van. Back then, we provided a service for young professional couples while they were away on holiday. What we'd do is, once they'd locked their house up and left it empty, we'd go round while they were away and we'd break in and we'd nick everything. Like I say, we mostly did people's houses when they was away on holiday. Reg said if they can afford to go on holiday, they can afford to get robbed. Sometimes when we're in a position to move fast, we'd do a house over while the occupants were away at the funeral of their nearest and dearest. Christmas and New Year's was always a busy time for us, loads more stuff in everyone's houses, and we used to be able to charge extra for stuff that was gift wrapped. Selling the stuff on was easy. We just used to go to the second hand shop in Bedminster. Simple as that. Rest of the stuff we sold on eBay. The police just didn't bother trying to trace any of it. They're all bogged down in paperwork, Reg used to say. For the jobs we did, we didn't travel far. We mostly did houses around the posh areas, Redland and Clifton, up on the hill. Sometimes we'd make a trip over to Bath. We never did houses in Eastern or Montpellier. Reg used to say there's no point, you'll get naff all. He said people there are either poor or hippies or rich people pretending to be poor. Trustafarians, Reg calls them. All thieves use Facebook these days. They find out what people are up to by getting them to join groups. The first one was called Six Degrees of Separation, the big Facebook experiment. Once people joined the group, we had all the info we needed. Later on, when we needed more places to do over, clients, Reg used to call them, uh, we set up other groups with names like I secretly want to punch slow walking people in the back of the head and I bet I can find a million people who hate George W. Bush. It makes life much simpler. Reg is brilliant. He's so clever. I first met him inside about five years ago. I was doing the last three months of a three year sentence for aggravated assault. Reg says I shouldn't have been prosecuted if I was aggravated. He said the other bloke was asking for it. The judge didn't see it that way though. It was at this open prison over near the motorway. We called it Centre Parks because it was like a holiday camp. It was like a job centre where you could meet other cons and sort out what you were going to do when you got out. It was when we were in there that Reg set up the Facebook group Let's Get Rage Against the Machine to Christmas number one. That was one of his most successful ones, he said. So anyway, back to the job I was telling you about. It was 2007, about 8 o'clock in the morning. It was just before Christmas and we was in Reggie's van heading up Park Street to do another job. We had Chris Moyles on the radio. I love Chris Moyles. I think he's brilliant. Reg says he's mind is lowest common denominator crap. Reg prefers Radio 4. It's all long words and like well boring, but sometimes Reg would let me listen to Radio 1 if he was in a good mood. So it was nice and warm in the van, the heater was going full blast, the windows were a bit steamy and it was like proper cosy in there. So we went up past the triangle and on up towards the suspension bridge. On Facebook we found out about this family who were going to Africa for a whole month, going to Kenya to go on safari and all that. So we drive up to this massive house in Clifton. It was like huge, one of them ones facing out towards the suspension bridge. It was like a hotel or something, but not because it was someone's house. Reg parked the van outside the front of the house. He's got it all sussed, he's like a criminal genius. First of all, I put the magnetic sign on the side of the van saying 24 hour locksmith. And Reg puts this note on the dashboard saying locksmith on call. We got all these long window cleaners poles out the back of the van. And well, you know, like them really long bendy ones. Uh, and Reg has got like these tree pruners as well on a long pole. So the first thing he does is he uses that, he puts it up high and he uses that to cut through the phone lines on the front of the house. And then uh, he puts that to one side and I hand him the next pole. On the end of one of them he's got a cordless drill like a Makita or something. And what he does is he stands there and he turns the drill on and then he stretches the pole up the front of the house to the bottom of the burglar alarm and he drills a hole up through the bottom of it. And then he brings that down and I get him the next pole which has got like a can of expanding foam on the end like builders use. like. And uh, he pushes that up to the bottom of the burger alarm for where the hole is and he squirts all this stuff in through the bottom. And uh, you have to wait a minute or two. Some of the stuff drips out and you have to be careful you don't get it on your clothes. And, uh, and then after a while what happens is the expanding foam just gets bigger and bigger until eventually it like cracks open the burger alarm. Reg says you can knacker anything with that stuff. 
Next off, we've got to get into the house. And uh, what we do is Reg has got this jacking thing like, you wind it and it ratchets open, right? So you wedge that in by the, by the lock on the door. You turn the handle and eventually the door just pops open, sweet as a nut. And then we're in. It's funny, we went in and it was all white carpets and like high ceilings, like real posh. And I thought I ought to take my shoes off, but and I remember what we were there for and we just marched straight in. And uh, we go down the hallway and there's all mistletoe and tinsel and there's all these paintings that have got tinsel around them. We go all the way to the end and it's really lovely. And there's this lovely big room with this huge Christmas tree like from Cripps Causeway or something. And there's a big pile of presents and there's chocolates and all that. I thought it was weird because the house was all done out even though they were away for like a couple of weeks and that. And uh, But we found out on Facebook that what it was, they had this 70 year old daughter it was a bit sport and she was all like, I want it to be Christmas when I get back. So the old man had like spent loads of money on, on Christmas and all that. So when they come back on holiday, they could have Christmas like all over again. So it's perfect. We're looking around the room and there's piles of presents and boxes of chocolates and it's all just gorgeous. And while we're looking, we're picking stuff up and shaking them, trying to work out what's in them, you know, like you do on Christmas. And, uh, and then all of a sudden there's just slam, slam, slam. And all the doors in the room just slam shut. And Reg looks at me and he's, look, he's a bit worried and he looks at me and he says, they've only gone and installed an SD2000 security system. I'm like, what do you mean? He's like, this whole house is on lockdown. So I'm like, what are we going to do? So I'm running around the room and I'm trying all the doors and all the windows. And, uh, and then this voice starts up. It's like a recorded message. It says, you have been detained by the SD2000 security system. Please remain where you are. Law enforcement agencies will be with you shortly. And then in the distance, quietly at first, I could hear sirens and they're getting closer and closer. And then I could hear a police helicopter and it's like hovering above the house and it's getting lower and lower. And I'm grabbing Reg by the jacket and I'm shaking him saying, Reg, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? And the sirens are getting closer and louder and the helicopter's getting further down near the house and I'm looking out the window and all the windows are rattling and, and there's leaves blowing around in the garden. I looked at Reg, I said, what are we going to do, Reg? He said, there's nothing we can do. And he slumped down on the sofa and he looks up at me and he says something that I'll never forget. He looks up at me and says, Pass the quality street. <laughs>